Hi, Jamie here, the head teacher. What is the scourge of the modern age? Is making banks $183 billion in fees and interest every year. Do you know? Credit cards. Credit cards. So, we're going to look at credit cards and how they affect you. Credit card debt. Do all you can to avoid it. And let me show you how. Are you just about to get a credit card or do you have one already and don't know how to put a check on your credit card spending? Or do you just want to learn the secret of not getting trapped by credit card debt? Because you're here, the answer to those questions is definitely yes. In that case, you're in for a mind-blowing revelation about credit cards credit card debt and how to avoid this credit card debt. Let's look at the starting point. A lot of people are trying so hard to put a check on their credit card spending. The starting point is to understand how credit cards work, when to use it and how to ultimately get in control and stay in control of your personal finances. In fact, you can choose to refuse to take a credit card. Now, Getting a good grasp on how credit card works and how best to use it is one thing. But what about having the right attitude, such as self-control and financial planning? Do you think they matter even more when it comes to avoiding credit card debt? Of course, yes. Good financial planning combined with self-control is something you need to imbibe if you really want to avoid this credit card debt. And let me show you some practical and helpful ways to put a check on debt resulting from these credit cards. First, think carefully before buying that stuff on credit. Don't be an impulse buyer, thereby spending money and incurring debt unnecessarily. Think carefully and consider if it is worth incurring the debt and fees on that item. If after thinking rationally, and you consider the item to be a need, you should ask yourself whether it is better to pay cash or to use this credit card. Particularly avoid using your credit card to purchase luxury items like TVs or home decor or things or similar luxuries. Instead, pay cash or use a debit card to purchase them. Items such as toiletries and groceries are not worth buying with credit cards. This means even when those disposable items are no longer there, you will still be paying for them. This really doesn't make sense at all. So what should you purchase with a credit card? Sometimes life throws a curveball at you, like medical emergencies and unexpected surprises. You may have to use this credit card, especially if you don't have cash. But most times, please consider getting and using a debit card. Often, paying cash and carrying cash around can be quite an inconvenience. As a result, you want a means of payment that will eliminate this need to carry cash. So go for a debit card and avoid racking up credit card debt. You can make all your purchases and carry out most of your other transactions that you perform with your credit card using a debit card. But don't forget that a credit card is nothing but a loan tool, meaning you are bound to incur debt by using it. On the other hand, a debit card lets you do all your transactions without owing anything. You are able to tap into your bank account directly to make an instant payment. However, you also need to exercise caution when using a debit card. Just the same way caution is needed when using a credit card. You have to take control of your credit card expenses. Now, here are some additional practical steps that would help you say no to credit card debt. Give yourself 30 days no credit card use practice. Now you're wondering, what will I achieve with this, yes? First, it would help build discipline and make you realise you can actually do without credit cards. It is also easier to, to pinpoint where you're putting your money and how you spend your money when you opt to use cash instead. 
It will shock you to know where your money is going when you practice this. It will help put your feet firmly on the ground to take charge of your finances by being careful about how you spend. Consider also getting help for your spending habits. If you are an uncontrollable spendthrift, it may be high time you start seeking help to get out of your frivolous spending habits. But first, you must admit you have a problem with spending and make up your mind to bring this habit to an end. Now, a couple of ways to, to get help with your spending habits is, is one, you could speak with a financial advisor and two, get professional help from an effective budgeting. It may also be that your reckless spending habits requires much more help, such as seeing a therapist to uncover the root cause of your wasteful spending lifestyle, and subsequently an effective measure or cure for your spending problem. You really need to be well informed about the terms and conditions attached to your credit card. When you should repay the credit card company is found in the fine print that many people just skip over when signing up for credit cards. The fine print details the volume of credit you're entitled to, interest payable on any outstanding balances, as well as fees payable for late repayment or non-repayment. When I was using credit cards, I used to have it set up to pay automatically the astounding, that outstanding amount before any interest charges were applied. So before you sign up for credit card, ensure you read the fine print and understand its terms and conditions. Then you can make your final decision. Remember, you can always call your credit card company to make inquiries about your credit card limit, fees, charges, and other concerns you may have about your credit card usage. Now, if you're having problems paying back your debts, then contact the company and be honest with them. Work something out. It is better for you to make this contact than for them to come hunting you, because they will. It's also best to stay away from the extras that come with this type of card. These extras include a life insurance policy or fraud protection plans for, for your credit card. These extras are often needless and, and usually well overpriced. John Rubino just published a little while ago a very interesting article entitled New Loan Sharks Are Entering the Credit Card Business. He said a fellow writer was researching the credit card business to try to figure out how card users asserted which customers to chase. After creating fake personas from an affluent straight arrow who always pays her bills on time to a, a trashy guy with impulse control issues with a history of multiple defaults and late payments. The findings, the impulse control issues guy was deluged with card solicitations while the straight arrow's mailbox was relatively empty. Credit card companies make most of their money by extending credit to people who will be frequently late, thus generating massive late fees. And when they do make a payment, they choose the minimum to let their balances accrue double digit interest rates. Customers who pay off their modest monthly balance are relatively unprofitable for the card companies and therefore just not as attractive. Why bring this up? Because two of the biggest banks in the US are now eyeing up this business. Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated and Wells Fargo & Co are on the brink of piling into credit card lending, seeking a share of the $183 billion in fees and interest tied to this product. The lure is clear. The fees and interest US banks collected from their card businesses jumped 12% in 2017 from the year earlier. 
A study by NerdWallet shows that the average household that maintains a balance and credit card debt pays $904 in interest a year. How many of you are paying an annual fee on your card? A few of you. This is understandable because card issuers make fee charging cards sound like a, a status symbol. But in reality, they do virtually nothing that a no fee card can do. So cancel that high fee card and replace it with one that lets you buy things and accepts full payment at the end of the month. That is any standard issue Visa or MasterCard. Now, if you're not feeding the credit monsters, where are they getting all those billions in interest and fees from? Obviously, it's the poor buggers who can't manage credit and because they are specifically targeted by card issuers. I have a word for them, it starts with B, but I'm not going to put it on this video. So, you know, this is up to you. And we've gone over the basics of credit card debt and how it affects you. Please, please be careful. And don't keep this a secret. Like, share, and, and join me with your friends and your families. And subscribe, because if we don't look after ourselves, no one else will. Until next time, this is Jamie at thehedgeteacher.com.